When I was asked by Shine's Horizons to talk to you about the future of endo, I imagined a world where endodontists were doing root canal therapy in the International Space Station or on Mars while wearing spacesuits. Well, little did I know that a global pandemic was going to happen and that we were going to wear spacesuits right here on Earth while doing root canal therapy. I guess so much for my predictions. But joking aside, the experience we went through during this pandemic proves that we are resourceful as a species and can adapt quickly to our circumstances and to difficult challenges. The future will certainly bring us its own set of new challenges, but if the past is good measure, we will also overcome those challenges through our collective will. But what about the future of endo? Let's get back to that topic. Now, I'm no Nostradamus, but my team and I at Rebuild the Endo have made several predictions about endo in the past that have turned out to be true and correct. And after all, Dexter Scotchbrev and I started this new bioceramic cement revolution in endodontics that changed the field. And I was directly involved in the development of the BC putty, which has also resulted into the most efficient method of root repair and surgery in endodontics, replacing the MTA repair with the more efficient surgical and non-surgical lid techniques. The clinical solutions that we've developed at Rebuild Endo are the fastest growing body of techniques in endodontics globally today. So maybe I can make a few predictions, but please take everything I say with a grain of salt as there is nothing I hate more than futurists making promises that never materialize. And I'm talking to you, Nicole Yorkin of the Los Angeles Times. Where is my jetpack? Okay, so let's talk about some general concepts that I think we will witness at some point in the near future or a little bit farther down or are already seeing materialize in the dodonics as we speak. Now, some of these areas may be mutually exclusive, meaning that if one takes hold, then probably the other one is not gonna take hold because it would be redundant. And as a result, it's technologies that are efficient and low cost that usually will take hold first and exert competitive pressure on the more complicated or complex technologies on the market. So I believe that we will probably see mainly improvements in the areas of molecular diagnostics, disinfection, regenerative procedures and bioengineering, additive printing, digital imaging, robotics, as well as customized medicine. Now let's talk about specific procedural steps and how these technologies can potentially affect these steps at some point down the line. An accurate diagnosis is the first step in devising an effective treatment plan. And as I've already said before many times in my presentations, the correct treatment plan is the most influential factor for the successful outcome of any given case. This is true in endodontics as any of the restorative procedures as well as any of the surgical procedures. Everything starts with a treatment plan. So better diagnostics will help improve our success rate directly by allowing better treatment plan. Here, using improved imaging and precise molecular assays may help improve the diagnosis of pulpal status of a symptomatic or asymptomatic teeth with heavy restorations or that we can find out if a tooth at the site of pain is actually the source of the pain or not. And that happens through better diagnostics or pulpal testing and so on. Because we're all familiar with patients with diffuse site of pain, the inability for them to tell which one of the teeth is the source of pain. So with better pulpal molecular diagnostics, the pulp can at least be ruled out in a certain number of teeth, and then we can triage from there. Higher resolution 3D imaging and reverting to MRI or other equivalents for soft tissue diagnostics as opposed to heart tissue diagnosis may also improve our diagnostic capacity at some point down the line when this kind of imaging becomes available. On the molecular side, sampling of curricular fluids adjacent to highly restored teeth may be able to give us insight into the status of the pulp in such teeth or even tissue sampling at the site of a pulpal exposure or during a pulpotomy may be able to give us a better understanding of the demarcation line between normal as well as infected pulp, which can provide us with critical decision making and information about a decision as to where a pulpotomy can stop and when should we do a full pulpectomy procedure. We currently don't have that kind of information available to us clinically and use proxies for this kind of decision making such as bleeding and bleeding time and controlling of the bleeding to make that decision. With such a rapid cherocyte assay, it would be very helpful to us because it will help us be able to better direct or vital pulp therapy cases and can potentially make endodontic therapy a minimally invasive procedure 
if caught on time, but reverting to partial pulpotomies, pulpotomies, and so on, as opposed to do a full pulpectomy and root canal therapy. Therefore, the combination of imaging and molecular diagnostics can allow us to diagnose disease as a much earlier stage of development and progression, and it could also allow us to be and use less invasive techniques for their mitigation. Now, access is an important clinical step in root canal therapy procedure. Also, it's one of the more dreadful ones for the average clinician as it requires a lot of skill and difficult teeth. The role of higher resolution 3D imaging and digital scanning technologies can result into printing or fabrication of access guides that can allow the operator to be more minimally invasive in their preparations, just like implant therapy. These types of access guides can help us achieve quick and efficient access into more calcified types of cases. And this is obviously already available, but requires some fine tuning and streamlining of the workflow for efficient application of this technology. The addition of haptic-based guided access devices and the evolution of such devices eventually into full-fledged surgical robots will probably transition operators from working with hand pieces and drills into working with surgical operating room level robotics that is previously only used in some high-end brain surgical procedures and other types of surgical procedures in the operating room to downscale those into dental operatories for some of the more average surgical procedures that we do on the outpatient basis and that way be able to achieve a very high level of precision and predictability and virtually eliminate access procedural errors such as excessive dentin removal or perforations that kind of mire our procedures endodontically. Now here the combination of high resolution 3D imaging and probably AI driven robotics will help improve predictability of access and shift the procedure from a highly skill based art to largely predictable step for most operators. One of the greatest changes in clinical endodontics over the past 30 years has been the advent of nickel titanium rotary instruments and the technology that's come along with that. While nighttime instruments have been great, the improvements in design, metallurgy, as well as the motions that are associated with these instruments have helped improve the efficiency and safety of instrumentation. Here, the future is again in imaging. I foresee additive milling and printing technologies producing less expensive instruments, but more importantly, combining this type of technology with high resolution 3D imaging preoperatively can potentially result into customizing an instrument chair side for a given tooth and allowing a single file technique as a result of that chair side customization of the treatment and technology for that given tooth. However, between you and I, despite such potential areas of advancement, I actually foresee instrumentation to become a historical relic in the future where better disinfection and irrigation protocols will probably reduce the importance of this step altogether, minimizing and possibly even eliminating it altogether. Now, the holy grail of endodontics and the rate limiting step in all of endodontic therapy has been and will remain the concept of disinfection. As Dr. Sam Seltzer, one of the big pioneers in endodontics, once said, the only way to sterilize the root canal is to put the patient's head in the autoclave. So what will be invented next? I would assume probably autoclaves that are the size of a patient's head. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, it's true, if we could somehow nuke everything inside the root canal and destroy all antigens and microbial biofilm, we could potentially have close to 100% success rate in all clinical cases. Now, I can see much of the research directed in this area as new irrigation solutions with probably broader spectrum of coverage, incorporating clinical and biological agents in addition to enzymes as well as other types of peptides and you know other types of chemicals that could potentially dissolve the biofilm before rinsing it out can become a routine approach to addressing biofilm management and their important role in causing and maintaining endodontic disease. Now, 
The addition of some type of photodynamic effect using probably antimicrobial wavelengths, specific wavelengths of light that are antimicrobial, as well as using coherent light such as laser and so on, laser beams to either through heat or through generation, the interaction of laser light with the water, creating ultrasonic and shockwave energy or even ultrasonics themselves, destroying and disrupting the biofilm once again before rinsing it out. This, this theme of destroying the biofilm and rinsing it out will remain the same. Hopefully new technology will come along that is able to achieve this end more efficiently for us. Ultimately, the production of a specific chemical to dissolve the biofilm and mechanically rinsing it out with safe devices will have a real possibility in the future. And that's something exciting that we can all look forward to. While obturation has already seen great advances in the past decade, simplifying a previously complicated and uh, advanced warm vertical condensation technique with hydraulic condensation, and then in the process, democratizing this step of the procedure by making an, a predictable shape fill more achievable by the average clinician, I still see that the future advances in cement technology as well as methods that can deliver the cement reliably to the apical area of the tooth will become available more readily and it could help improve uh, the process along this step of the way just as well. However, I also believe that the main improvement in this area will actually be moving away from prosthetic replacement of pulp and moving perhaps towards more regenerative procedures. And as we know, the best root canal filling is actually the dental pulp and that we should always try to preserve the pulp whenever possible. Before attempting prosthetic replacement, we've got a percha and sealer. We should always try to find ways, if at all possible, to regenerate the pulp. But as we begin to better understand the nature of regenerative procedures, we will eventually improve disinfection processes which is one of the rate limiting steps here in order to achieve successful outcomes, we can then potentially achieve more predictable outcomes for regenerative procedures. With improved scaffolds as well as safe addition of growth factors to such scaffolds and it's also potential you know stem cell banking or utilization of embryonic stem cells, more predictable regenerative procedures will probably improve the pulp regeneration and will probably be able to not only regenerate pulps but also probably at some point whole tooth organs to treat either necrotic or missing teeth with full tooth organs. So this option may actually affect implant dentistry as well with having whole tooth regeneration with the ultimate goal of this therapeutic approach for all missing teeth. Although the conventional belief is that post retaining a core weakens the tooth in the process or the root in the process, better research into the use of posts with similar modulus of elasticity as dentin and also improved bonding mechanism to dentin will obviously and finally make bonding of a post a process of reinforcing the tooth rather than weakening it. This is certainly a possibility. So this is especially true if we use size mash post and skip the use of any post drill that further weakens a tooth by merely bonding a post into place. The use of such posts that can potentially be bonded with the same modulus of elasticity as the root itself will be certainly advantageous to restore broken down teeth that cannot have regenerative procedures and require posts for biomechanical reasons. While the current status of prosthetic restoration of an endocrinally treated posterior teeth requires some kind of cuspal coverage and currently full coverage crowns is basically what is mostly recommended in these types of cases, I foresee that as more outcome studies using stronger of the more modern composites are used, we might be able to move away from this more uh, expensive and also fairly uh, invasive cuspal coverage prosthetics such as a crown to maybe using uh, bonded bulk fill restorations or more minimally invasive designs of uh, casting that are not only less invasive in terms of removal of healthy enamel in the tooth but also perhaps better protective in terms of higher strength and better ability to prevent cuspal deflection and protecting the tooth. 
teeth requiring root canal therapy, post and core and crowns may end up easier replaced with a regenerative tooth also having a new tooth organ there through tissue engineering principles by organ regeneration instead of prosthetically repaired parts of the original tooth and that's also a potential possibility in the near or a little bit later future. The overall success rate of endodontic therapy is currently dependent on the localization and skillful negotiation of each root canal in the tooth and its apical terminus, removal of total tissue or large volume of tissue and microbial biofilm and antigens and obturation of the space remains the goal of this procedure. Now, in the future, higher success rates can certainly be achieved once we have mastered better irrigation protocols offering a broader and deeper use of safe irrigants inside the root canal and potential obturation of the space with a simple and efficient biocompatible cement or regeneration of the pulpal tissue back into the spaces. We will enjoy a higher success rate also by improving our diagnostic procedures and arresting disease earlier through intercepting disease processes. As is always the case with diseases that follow a predictable cascade of events throughout their pathogenesis, Early interception is important where um, less invasive procedures can avoid the more invasive procedures down the stream. This is why prevention through education is the ultimate answer to eradicate such diseases. Root canal therapy is one such disease. Over 99% of dental decay leading to root canal infection is entirely preventable. Despite the tremendous technological advances and the more bells and whistles that have been developed and are going to be developed in the future, sometimes the easiest solutions are the cheapest ones, simple solutions that are right before our eyes. A toothbrush, a toothpaste, a floss, and a sensible diet low in sugar is all it takes to save our teeth. So, the real answer here is not another gadget for our patients. Here, knowledge is power, and having the discipline to implement knowledge is the ultimate wisdom that we can bestow upon our patients by educating them. As healthcare practitioners, our goal should be to put ourselves out of business by making sure our patients are educated best about preventing this highly preventable disease. Besides being agents of repair, we need to brand ourselves as agents of change through prevention. Prevention of decay will ultimately be the cheapest and most predictable way that we can help improve endodontic outcomes today and in the future. And this only happens through effective education and constant communication reinforcement with our patients. Where we will then and Horizons, I'm Ali Nisei, and let's save some teeth.